everybody, Brian here. I wanted to show you uh, my latest beetle finds, so uh, here we go. Uh, first thing I found uh, last week at my local record shop, Record Outlet, I found this copy of Magical Mystery Tour uh, released on Capitol, and it's in such amazing shape. I mean, let me get a little closer look here. It's like the best shape I've ever seen Magical Mystery Tour in. And there's the inside with, of course, the booklet. A lot of times with Magic Mystery Tour, the booklet like falls out because it's just stapled in here. But this one's in really nice shape. And actually, I don't want to like mess with the booklet too much because it'll, it might mess it up and make it look like all the other ones that have the mess of the booklet. But anyway, this is really cool. And it's actually on the capital orange label. Now the Capital Orange label, um, it does get kind of a lot, of, kind of a bad rap because a lot of them don't sound all that great. They weren't, um, they weren't pressed uh, in the best conditions of all time. But the one exception is this Mag Magical Mystery Tour album. Um, so this is a 1970s uh, reissue, and it sounds really, really, really good. Um, it was pressed just in a in a fantastic way. The only thing that's kind of a drag is on side two, let me get you a better look at this label here. On side two, which side two, a lot of the songs are in fake stereo, um, or like duphonic stereo, I guess is what they called it. And the thing that sucks about that is it's just like they put, so if they take the mono recordings and they take all the highs and put them in one speaker and all the lows and put them in the other speaker. So you get this like fake stereo sound Really, it just sounds pretty, pretty crappy, and uh, unfortunately, they did that with this. Um, so, like, what is it? I think uh, like Strawberry Fields, Penny Lane, Baby You're a Rich Man, All I Need Is Love, are all in this like fake stereo, which is kind of drag. But side one, with with all the the film songs from Matchroom Two Tour, those sound fantastic and great. So. Uh, yeah, I was really excited to pick this up, this 70s capital reissue of Imagine Mystery Tour. So there's that. And then from another record shop that I go to a lot in Ventura called Giacomo Records, I picked up this Let It Be. And this is a Japanese pressing. And uh, there's the front cover. There's the back, and you can see... It's got the Japanese writing down there. And it's in pretty good shape. Well, I mean the uh, the sleeves in pretty good shape. It's a gate fold. It's a normal let it be. And this is a uh, another seventies, um, another seventies issue, or well, reissue, I suppose. And here is what the vinyl looks like, and the vinyl is in really really good shape. And it sounds real. Really nice. There's the label. There's the other label. And uh, with these Japanese issues, they come with something really cool that I always find amusing. And it's this. They all come with a lyric sheet. Get you better view this lyric sheet. The lyrics aren't exactly correct but they're there and that's kind of cool because uh other than sergeant pepper and the white album the beatles didn't really ever put their lyrics and natural mystery tour they didn't really uh print their lyrics so it's cool to have this lyric sheet even if they're not exactly all perfectly correct so that's japanese issue of uh let it be and I hope to someday have all of the Japanese editions of the Beatles albums, but right now I think I just have uh, Rubber Soul and uh, Let It Be. So I gotta keep, uh, keep searching for those. Okay, this is something cool. I actually got this quite a long time ago, but I have never, uh, I haven't shown it to you guys. So this is Beatles Rarities, and uh, it's on Capitol. And the cool thing about this is it's just this like paper sleeve. 
The back is just blue. But what's really cool, I think, about this is that it's on the capital purple label. That and it's mastered by Wally. I'm it's not going to show up on here, but um, on the inner groove here, on the dead wax, you can see. Well, no, you can't see, but I'll tell you. If you could see, it'd be right here. And it says mastered by Capital, and then etched in there is this guy Wally. And if you can find the Capital Purple labels with Wally, with Wally's etching in there, they sound so good. And this one sounds amazing. And uh, I think this originally came in like a box set um, for the Beatles. I think it was like the Beatles, the blue box that Capital put out or whatever. And, uh, or maybe this was just like a, uh, I don't know. I don't really know a lot of history behind this. Maybe you guys know. If you could tell me, I'd be interested to know. I have the other ones that are just the standalone in the regular sleeve of the rarities. Um, but yeah, this one, just in this paper sleeve and it just says capital right down here so yeah anybody have any information on this and this is the it's not the american rarities you know that had like iron walrus and all that kind of weird stuff on it this is just the british one with like it starts with across the universe and has like yes it is it's basically like b-sides um all put together and the the german uh i want to hold your hand and she loves you so anyway there we go, Beatles Rarities. It's kind of a cool little item to have. And then last but not least, I didn't think I'd ever own one of these because they're always really expensive online. But I finally picked one up uh, just a couple days ago for a pretty good price. And it's Abbey Road. And it's the Mobile Fidelity version of Abbey Road. And the story behind these is that... Um, they're mastered at half speed from the original master tapes. Uh, and by doing that, the sound quality is just really, really phenomenal. Um, there's a big debate online from a lot of people saying they love the sound of these. It's the best way to go. There's some people who say, like, oh, they're, they're terrible. They ruined it. They should never have even tried to do it, or they should have done it a different way. But I think this sounds great. Um, I own about, with this one now, like, six versions of Abbey Road on vinyl, and this is hands down my favorite. Um, the stereo image is just super wide and really, really cool. And a lot of people say, like, I guess some of the complaints and some of the praisings of this album are that the EQing of it is like a smiley face. So which that means it's like all the lows are kind of high, and then it dips down, so there's not a lot of mids, and then there's a lot of highs. So it's like a smiley face like that, like a U. Uh, but here's the back cover, and the only difference here is that you can see it says uh, Half Speed Mastered by Stan Ricker, and then it talks about a uh, super high definition vinyl with with uh, extended life, meaning I guess it's like good vinyl. And actually, the vinyl itself is pretty cool, so let me take that out. It comes in this... Really nice, nice baggy here. And the vinyl is actually see-through when you put it up to light. But I don't think that's gonna come through for you guys, but that's what it looks like. There's the label, just a white label. And the vinyl's in really good condition, which I'm happy about, of course, because the record's not in good condition, what's the point of having it? So that's cool. And then it comes with a few little little inserts. I'll show you those. They don't really have a lot to do with the Beatles, but still pretty cool. So it comes with this cardboard thing. And it says, uh, uh, super discs, super tapes, super stars, super quality. It's a little spiel there. And on the back, so it's an audiophile's dream come true, and it talks about the Mobile Fidelity Company and why they do it and how they do it and what they're doing. And this is from 1979. And then this opens up, and you get little uh, just kind of adverts. This first one is this like yellow pamphlet, and it says basically if your record, when you bought the record, if it came with any imperfections, skipped or 
whatever, you can fill this out, send it in, and they'll send you a brand new uh, fresh copy that hopefully isn't uh, screwed up. But obviously, this one sounds great, so don't need to worry about it. And of course, it's from 1979, so I think if I mailed that in, it would probably, uh, they probably don't even exist anymore. I don't know. Well, they do exist. I know that. But maybe they don't exist uh, in the same location. And then there's this. It's pretty cool. Talks about that. So, those are my Beetle Finds. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. See you next time. Oh, I got the Paul McCartney shirt at the Paul McCartney concert that I saw in New Jersey. So, uh, that was this last weekend. There it is. Okay, see you next time.